Welcome to the architectural tour of the WCF RIA Services Big Shelf Sample Application, adapted for IdeaBlade's DevForce. Hi, I'm your host, Ward Bell, VP of Technology at IdeaBlade, and this video is meant to entice you to further explore RIA.js and this adaptation at the web link shown on the screen. Big Shelf is an example of an HTML application with a rich client front end that relies heavily on JavaScript. The WCF team is in the process of writing several JavaScript libraries, collectively called RIA.js. They can fetch entity data, validate user input, track changes, and save changes to the server, the kinds of client-side application logic you'd expect to see in a Silverlight application. The link on your screen takes you to the original RIA Services Big Shelf source and a superb walkthrough of that application. At IdeaBlade, we've been exploring a variety of ways to support HTML JavaScript clients. One possibility is to make DevForce the data provider on the server for a RIA.js client. RIA.js today only communicates with a RIA domain service. So, as we'll see, we've created our own simple DevForce domain service that encapsulates a typical DevForce server and entity model. RIA.js accepts the DevForce domain service without complaint, as it would any domain service source. We didn't have to change the big shelf client HTML or JavaScript at all. This approach could make sense for customers who want to supplement their existing DevForce WPF or Silverlight application with a lightweight HTML version that can run on non-Microsoft mobile platforms. You can reuse your existing DevForce-based assets, implement an HTML client in a familiar architectural style, and take advantage of the RIA.js and jQuery libraries. That's what you'll be seeing in this video, starting with a quick look at Big Shelf running in a browser. We're running Big Shelf in IE9, not yet logged in, so we'll click the login link and get to the login page where we'll grab Brad's uh, username and password and put them in here. They're conveniently provided for us. We click login and we get uh, the welcome Brad and six books. There's a pager at the bottom so we can scoot ahead a couple of pages if we like. We can sort by author instead of title. There's some rating stars we'll get to in a second. But now I'll search for books by typing a few letters into the search box. Notice that as I type, it waits until I finish typing to search. And if I actually click on one of these star ratings, it saves my rating automatically. It's a little easier if we click this Welcome Brad and go to the Profile Editor to see the CRUD operations. And also validation. The validation rules are propagated from the server, so see when I delete the name it says it's required I cancel those pending changes and if I mess up the email the val email validation tells me that's no good and and those are propagated as I say we clear that uh, there's no JavaScript that we wrote now I'll add uh, a friend I'm looking for Yavor and I add him here and he's green meaning he's a pending ad and I click update profile and that saves him if I click that little X there it's going to be a pending delete and I click update profile and that saves that and that's enough for Big Shelf now. You're looking at the README files in the DevForce adaptation of Big Shelf. It describes step by step how to migrate the original WCF version to DevForce, and it's not very long as you can see. The solution actually contains three different samples, of which Big Shelf is just one and the one we care about. We copied the original solution from program files where it was installed by downloading the WCF bits from Coplex, and then we modified our copy. Now remember the app has two main screens, the books and the profile editor, and default.aspx is the book screen and it begins with jQuery and jQuery plugins. A RIA.js application depends heavily on jQuery. Then there are the many libraries that make up RIA.js itself. Of course, they'd all be combined in a single file in production. And now here's the profile editor, myprofile.aspx. So we've got our two HTML files, and they both have the same JavaScript start. Two HTML files, we've got two corresponding script files with approximately the same name, default.js. And we should have a myprofile.js. And uh, these are application-specific JavaScript files that hold view logic. You know, they get and save data, listen to button clicks, kind of like a view model in a Silverlight MVVM application. The first thing the book screen does using the RIA.js data source jQuery plugin 
is query the server for the current user's profile and related info. So if we close up the scripts folder and open the services folder and look for the big shell service partial class file, which has the custom query methods in it, and we go hunt for uh, get profile for search, which returns an iQueryable profile. That's the same method we are calling on the client in the JavaScript. So here we are back on the server, and uh, we see it has two lines. It takes the current user, finds that for the profile ID. It's going to use the Def Force Entity Manager and build a query out of that, looking for a profile with a matching ID. And it's also got these includes in it, which tells us that the query is also going to return with the profile, the profile's related friends and flag books, too. And now it's it's calling the Entity Manager, right? Here's the original WCF version of the method. Uh, see, it calls the Entity Frameworks object context, whereas we're calling the DevForce Entity Manager. That's the only difference between the two methods. At the top, we've listed the changes to this file, and, and they're really minimal. Okay, so this is the Big Shelf service, and if we go to where it's defined originally, uh, we see now that it inherits from DevForce Domain Service, rather than the Entity Framework uh, Oriented Link to Entities Domain Service. And um, uh, this was the WCF generated domain service with insert, update, and delete, delete methods for each entity type, which we've cleaned up but not really materially changed. So now if we navigate to the DevForce domain service, we see that it's uh, right here, and it's generic. It inherits from the domain service base class, and the uh, it's oriented towards a uh, an entity manager type, um, some kind of entity manager, just as the entity framework domain service was typed for some derivative of an object context. You should be able to use this example DevForce domain service over and over again in your applications. The implementation is quite small, mostly involving a few short method overrides that delegate to a DevForce Entity Manager instance running on the server. Let's look briefly at some of these members. Here's the initialize override that creates the Entity Manager instance if it doesn't exist yet. Create Manager is the default Entity Manager factory that you can replace easily, perhaps for testing. Here's the manager property itself. Aria calls persist change set in its save pipeline. We delegate to the equivalent dev for save changes. Aria calls query when it's ready to process the I queryable produced earlier, such as the get profile for search we saw moments ago. The core of it is letting Aria just do its thing with the query, which would invoke our dev force query and get the data. Around that core, we're tweaking the query strategy to influence RIA's serialization of the results back to the client. That's a topic we can cover in more detail in our write-up for this sample. And down here are the insert, update, and delete helper methods that simplify writing the entity type specific methods in the derived domain service, as we also saw a minute ago. We've been working our way from front to back, from the user experience to the HTML, to JavaScript, to domain service on the server. Finally, we've come to the entity model. The entity model is in the models folder. We started with the original Big Shelf model in the entity framework EDMX. The TT file is the DevForce T4 code generation template we added, which you know all about from day one with DevForce. We we'll look into the EDMX and we see that there are six big shelf entities. Now we need to make one change. We're going to inject a base class for all entities, a base class called RIA Entity. The DevForce generated classes are in the designer file. And if we scroll to the bottom here, we'll see that DevForce generated a shell of the RIA Entity base class for us. It's an abstract partial class that inherits from DevForce's base entity class. It's always empty. Whatever we want to do to this class, it's going to go in the partial class file. So we'll close that up. And we see a reaentity.cs here. Open that. Reaentity does just one thing. It hides the DevForce Entity Aspect property from RIA Services serialization using the exclude attribute. We have to hide this property from RIA Services or you'll get a serialization exception. 
Now you could put more model-wide logic here, but we won't in this example. Instead, we'll perform the last essential step, adding associations. We open the RIA metadata class file. In this file, RIA generated a metadata class for every entity in the model. Here's the book entity class. Within it is the book's nested metadata class. Usually this is where you put entity validation attributes. For clarity, we erase the generated members that aren't doing validation and don't contribute value. We're left with two members whose names match book navigation properties. One, category name, is a reference navigation property returning a single parent category name entity. The second, flagged books, is a list navigation returning the child flagged book entities associated with this book. Now we have to tell Rhea how these navigations are implemented. How you get from this book entity to a category name or this book entity to the flag books. And you need an at uh, association attribute that has a name for the association between the entity types, the key property on this end, the book end, and the key property on the other entity's end. In a reference navigation like category name, a navigation returning a single entity, you have to say is foreign key equals true, meaning that the, the category ID property is the foreign key in book, which points to the parent category name entity. Now you'll, you'll probably want to read about this on our site or in the RIA services documentation. For now, just know that you have to add these attributes to every navigation property. Why didn't RIA do it? Because RIA creates these associations from entity framework navigation properties. It doesn't create them for DevForce navigation properties. So we have to tell RIA about the associations manually with these attributes. And we have to do it for all navigation of entities exposed in the JavaScript model, as we see here. Someday we might automate this for you, but not just yet. And so we end our architectural tour of the DevForce-enabled RIA.js Big Shelf sample. Here are the key points. You can indeed develop in HTML and JavaScript using the same entity-oriented client-side programming paradigm that you know from Silverlight, WPF, or WinForms. RIA.js is a collection of JavaScript libraries that collectively provide the JavaScript developer with change tracking, validation, and access to remote data on a server. Now at the current moment, RIA.js accesses data by calling a WCF domain service. In converting the Big Shelf sample to DevForce, we didn't touch the client JavaScript or HTML at all. We just made DevForce on the server look like a WCF domain service. Specifically, we did three things. We generated a standard DevForce entity model from the same EDMX used by RIA sample. We added some association metadata tags for RIA serialization and we made a small DevForce domain service out of the re-example. I hope you enjoyed this movie, that you'll look at the discussion and the code available at the link on your screen, and that you'll learn more about DevForce at www.ideablade.com. Happy coding!